So uh, today we're going to look at all the principles you need to set up and go dead baiting on your local river, canal or lake. So I'm going to run you through the tackle from dead baiting to float fishing and then hopefully at the end you'll have everything you need to know to be able to go out and try it yourself. Let's have a look at the gear. Okay, so let's have a look at the, uh, the tackle we need to be able to do some dead bait fishing. We'll start with the rod here. This is a 12 foot and it's the Elite Dead Bait Predator Rod. And this one is 12 foot, 2.75 test curve, so two and three quarter pound test curve. It's also available in a three and a quarter pound test curve. And those ones I tend to be using for when I do fish the big reservoirs. They got much more backbone. I'm probably fishing bigger leads because there's much more wind on those waters, maybe maybe bigger distances. So I wouldn't use them today on, on a lake this size or a canal or anything like that. I, I tend to use these smaller two and three quarter test curves. 12 foot means they're great for casting so you can get the distance on them as well um, and we also do them in uh, the warrior range as well so these are the top of the range rods and we've got the warrior range rods as well and they're available in the 12 foot two and three quarter and the three and a quarter as well so they're they're um, budget based they're great rods they've still got good backbone in them um, but if you don't fish every winter all winter for pike or, or you, you fancy just having some to co go alongside your carp gear then they're fantastic was to have uh, the warrior range and and if you want the kind of premium ones then that's going to be the elite rods here and then we can move on and we can look at the reel i tend to use a reel which is, which holds a lot of braid on it on these so these are the fox fx9 ones they're mini big pit reels so uh no bait runner system or anything like that off the front drag uh, which means they've got a superb drag on them as well and i load them up with 55 pound horizon braid uh it might sound real overkill especially if you you don't do a lot of pike fishing or you're coming into pike fishing and you think 55 pounds i'm never going to catch a, a 55 pound pike or why would you use it well braid has got such a thin diameter that in fact it's probably very similar to around about 15 pound mono so it's not doing you any disadvantages there at all but the huge advantage of what it gives you is one for setting the hooks and two which is really really important that if you get snagged up on a sunken tree or, or, or maybe behind a rock or something under the water 55 pound braid should be able to slowly and gently with with steady pressure you should be able to just straighten those trebles out so if you just snapped and left the treble in the water and it had a bait on it that's pretty much a dead pike because that pike can come along eat those trebles that's it it can it can stop the throat so the last thing you want to do is do that so you need to fish safe and effectively and that's why we use up traces and that's why we use really strong powerful braid so that we can straighten those trebles out okay you've lost some trebles but ultimately you've just prevented leaving a, a baited up trace in, in, the, uh, in the river or the lake or the canal. So it's a safe way to fish. So it's 55 pound braid on there for me or more. I actually go a lot heavier when I, when I float fish some of the rivers as well, which I know are very, very snaggy. Um, and then we come down and we look at bite indication. So obviously that has to be key because it's eating a fish, the pike or the zander or the perch, but it's going to eat a fish. And when it does, it's going to try and get that fish into its stomach. So you need to know when it's got that bait in its mouth and you need to know as soon as possible. So we've got a thing here called a, a drop off indicator, which as the name says, it drops off when you get a bite. And at the front, I've also got an alarm as well. So I've got two points of indication. Okay. Um, the drop off indicator, you can hear I've got a receiver and I've got a front alarm on it and I clip that back in there and then that gives me those double points of indication. So as soon as I hear that, I'm straight onto the rod and I'm ready to be able to feel the bite and strike into the fish. We're talking about dead bait fishing today. And if you're gonna go dead bait fishing, you're gonna need dead baits. So there's a couple of different types of dead bait. There's freshwater and then there's sea baits as well. So there's the two. Um, 
there's a lot of different freshwater fish there's a lot of different sea fish as well um, some you would have heard of some you don't all different types um, some fisheries don't allow freshwater their baits because of the chance of disease being spread so you need to read the rules um, and it's sea baits only and, and some will only have certain types of sea baits and things so you do have to check the rules and regulations um, I haven't I've bought just a small selection today which which I know would work on this venue um, however there's things like lamprey and, and, and things which are very popular but they don't always work all the time and also if you use a bait for a certain amount of time on one venue there is every chance that those fish may actually start to change and, and go off those baits and go on to other baits so if we have a look what we've got here um, okay first of all we've got a little roach so we've got a little roach there and that's obviously a fresh water. Now, that's one today which I bought because if I do any um, sink and draw or wobbling, they're uh, all on the float. They're fantastic because it's a natural bait fish. Um, they've got loads of uh, silver to them, loads of flanking. So, you know, if you think of a spinner, it's flashes and spins that goes through. Well, that roach does a bit the same as it comes through the water, but it's natural. So when you stop and pause it, it's, uh, it's good to go. Um, I mean, these are readily available. You can catch them yourself yourself during the summer. And that's the, the mackerel. So fantastic, very oily. Got a very tough tail section up the top there, which is really good for getting that top hook through so that you can cast it out a bit further. Um, and they're really good if you can get them like this when they've really still got their colours to them and everything. So if they're this size, put them on hole. When you get the bigger ones, you can cut them in half and use a tail or a head section, either or. Um, this one... Some people might not be as familiar with. Now that one there is a pollen. So as in like pollen of a flower, pollen. Um, and what the beauty of this fish is, is it actually is buoyant. So if I was to put it in the water, it would just float now. Um, so what you can do without having to put any foam in it or any pop-up balls or anything like that, you can have this one here and it will, it will actually sit up. So that can be really good. You can get them sat up on their tails, you can get them sat up the length of the trace. But that's a really good one to get it in the, in the eyesight of a, of a pike. And then this one here, the smelt. Now, smell the fish. This one actually smells like cucumber. So um, it's very, very distinctive. So you've got a very oily fish there. You've got one which is popped up there. Whoops. And then you've got oh, your natural roach here and then you've got one which is quite pale and it actually smells of cucumber which is bizarre because you would think why would a pike eat a fish that smells of cucumber but they absolutely love smelt they caught so many fish over the years for so many people that's about an average size one you'd have that one on hole um, works great as a dead bait and it also works great for kind of sink and draw and on the float as well so it's really all around i probably wouldn't fish anywhere without a smelt to be honest because um, they are such great baits so that's the selection of baits I bought with me today. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look at how you actually hook them up as well.